Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter Dart tutorial video. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be talking about gesture detectors. We're also going to be talking about inherited widgets. And we're going to be talking about the Flutter widget tree in general. Here we have a fairly basic Flutter widget tree. We have our root widget and then we have multiple branch widgets that come out from this root widget. In this case, I haven't specified what type of widgets these branch widgets are. All I've really specified that the root widget is the root widget, which means that this widget here is usually the material application widget, though it could be something like a stateful widget or a stateless widget as well. If we just think about what it takes to change the state in, say, this widget, when we have state in this widget, we can call a function inside of this bottom widget here, which will then call up to this widget here, which will then proliferate the state back down to this widget. This widget calls up to this widget and then this widget re-renders this widget. And that's fairly basic and it's something that you'll see quite a lot inside of a Flutter application. However, what happens if you want to change a widget that's in the right side of the tree from the left side of the tree? Well, thus far in our applications, the way that we've only really seen to do this would be to make our root widget into a stateful widget and then proliferate the state from the root widget all the way down to the branch that we want to change. As an example, say this widget has a button in it, and this widget has a box of some kind, which has, say, information on it. When we push this button, we fetch new information for this page, and we want to be able to then re-render this page. The way to go about doing this would be to put the state inside of our root widget. So what would happen is when we push this button, it would then fire a function up to this root widget, which would then fire a function up to the root widget. The root widget would then proliferate the state change down to this widget and then down to our widget with the page, which would then re-render the entire widget tree. Now, obviously in smaller applications, re-rendering the entire tree is not necessarily a bad thing, and you're not going to see huge performance problems from re-rendering the entire tree either. There is a better way to do things. Now, this better way to do things is to add what's called an inherited widget right here after our root widget. So our root widget inflates an inherited widget, and then what we can do is we can put our state inside of this inherited widget, and when the button, for instance, calls to change the state, we can just call directly to the inherited widget. We hit the button, it calls up to our inherited widget, which then proliferates the change to this widget. Rather than having to re-render the entire tree, we just have to re-render our button and the page that we're updating the state for. Okay, so now let's build an example. This particular application will have two boxes. When we click on one of these boxes, it will then change the color for both of the boxes. And we'll do this in a random fashion. Of course, because we're going to be working with random numbers, we want to import Dart Math. Let's put our root widget directly inside of our main function. This root widget will then call to our myApp widget, and our myApp widget, rather than a stateless widget, will be a stateful widget. As always, we want to override the createState function, and then create a class that extends state with myApp in it. In our AppState function, we'll create two variables. One will be our random generator, and the other one will be the color that we want to proliferate down from this class. We also want to create a function called onTap, and this will be the function that we call when we tap one of the boxes. This will allow us to create our random color. We use color from RGBO, and this stands for red, green, blue, and then opacity. Our colors are numbers between zero and 256, so we want to get a random integer between 256 and zero. So we just call random.nextInt for each of our red, green, and blue fields. And then for our opacity field, we can just call random next double, which will get a double between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. And because our opacity is between 0.0, .0 and 1.0, this kind of works to our advantage. 
We also have to call the set state function because we want the application to know that we are re-rendering the widget tree. Then we'll create our build function like a normal build function, just pass in your build context. Except this time we're going to be pointing towards a object called color state, and this will be our inherited widget. With an inherited widget, you just take the class name and you extend inherited widget. And inside of this class, we want to have a constructor that has two main properties, one being our color and the other one being our onTap function. That way we can call our onTap function from any of the children of this class and it will call the onTap function inside of our app state class. We're also adding the key in here and then the child, which is a widget. We need to specify two variables. And in this case, they can be final variables, which means they're immutable inside of this particular class object. Our onTap function is immutable. Our color will change, however, but it only changes inside of our app state class and not inside of the inherited widget class. Inherited widget classes are by default immutable. Now we want to override a function called update should notify. This is a function that essentially lets the widgets know whether or not they should update and it passes back a boolean. You'll notice that it also takes in an inherited widget and we call this widget our old widget. Because our color state extends inherited widget, we can pass it in instead of passing in the generic inherited widget class. And then we can check to see if the color inside of our color state is not equal to our old widget color. So in other words, this will update when the color changes. We also want to add a method called of this will pass back a color state and we put in our build context in this particular method. Inside of this method, we can just call context, inherit from widget of exact type, and then pass in our color state. And this will allow our other widgets to gain access to this particular inherited widget in places that are farther down the tree. We can use our build context to get the state from our inherited widget in a way that's pretty organic using this of method. After this, we'll create a class called box tree and we'll have this be a stateless widget. We also want to come up to our color state constructor and add in the color and the on tap property. And we can do this simply by calling color and then on tap and then passing in the appropriate variables. We also want to specify the child that we want to inflate after we instantiate our color state. So the child will be our box tree. With our box tree, we want to set up the basic scaffolding for our application. So we just give it a scaffold. And then with the body, because we want these boxes to be in the middle, we're just going to give it a center. Then because I want these boxes to be right next to one another, we'll give this center a row. And then our row will have our two boxes in them. And we can just call these boxes box. Again, we want to make it so that box is a stateless widget. And again, we also want to override the build method inside of our box class. One thing I did forget was to declare our of method as a static method. And we do this because our of method is not an instance method, but rather a quote unquote static method. This is because our inherited widget is essentially a singleton class, which means it doesn't actually create multiple instances of itself. So inside of our box, we instantiate our color state by calling the of method and then passing in our context. And we set this equal to a final variable. And in this case, I'll just call it color state. Our boxes will be surrounded with what's called a gesture detector. And we'll talk about this a bit more after we build out what this box will look like. With our gesture detector, we can specify an on tap function and we can just call our color state on tap function. So this will directly call to our color state class and then call the on tap method inside of that class. We have a container. It will have a width of 50 and a height of 50. And then we'll make it so that it has a margin to the left of 80 pixels. This way our boxes are sort of in the middle of the screen. And then the color of the box will be based on our color state color. 
So you can kind of see how easy it is for us to get the state out of our inherited widget. We can just call the inherited widget name and then the variable that we want to gain access to. Okay, so now let's build this application in our emulator. Here's our application and I'm also going to alter the edge insets to 100. This makes it look a little bit more centered than it was before. Now if we just tap our boxes, you can see that they both change colors at the same time. And of course the colors are all random because we set up our random number generator. And so is the opacity. That's why some of these colors are basically invisible. Here's what the widget tree of this application looks like. And I'll bring up the application. We have our root widget, which is inside of our main function. Then below it, we have a stateful widget, which feeds into our inherited widget. Then below the inherited widget, we have a stateless widget, which then it has our two boxes inside of it. And the two boxes are independent of one another in this particular application. When we click on one of these boxes, what it does is it calls up to the inherited widget, which then calls back down to both of the boxes at the same time. And this is what then generates the color and changes the color. So while this is not as complicated an example as the other one that we looked at, it still kind of shows you why inherited widgets can be fairly powerful inside of a Flutter application. The only parts of the tree that we need to re-render every single time we click on one of these boxes are the boxes themselves and the actual inherited widget. Okay. So now let's talk a bit about our gesture detector. Currently we're using the on tap function to accomplish this color change. We have quite a few different properties in our gesture detector. We have an on double tap property and this checks to see if the user has double tapped the gesture detector, which in this case would be one of our boxes. We have an on horizontal drag property and we have various different horizontal drag types. We have on horizontal drag cancel, down, and start and update. And each one of these properties represents the life cycle of a horizontal drag. Here's what the life cycle of a drag inside of a gesture detector in Flutter looks like. So if I take the cursor, right click the box, and then drag it across the box like this, you can see various things happen. So first finger down happens, then we get our starting drag print. So this function runs, then drag update runs multiple times. This function runs as long as the user is still dragging their finger across the detector. We have a successful drag, so it prints out end. The cancel will happen if the drag itself does not complete for various reasons. For instance, say the drag doesn't have enough velocity or maybe it's too fast, seems like it's an accidental drag, then it will cancel. All the gesture detectors at a given place on the screen listen for a stream of pointer events as they flow and attempt to recognize these specific gestures. The detector itself decides which gesture to attempt to recognize based on the callbacks that it's getting that are non-null. So in this case, we have an on-tap gesture, we have a vertical drag gesture, and we have a horizontal drag gesture, which means this detector will try to figure out if the user is either tapping, dragging vertically, or dragging horizontally. So the gesture recognizer can only declare one winner, and conversely, the gesture recognizer will eliminate each of the listeners until one of them is declared a winner. So if I take and I drag my cursor diagonally across this box like this, you can see it's only saying dragging horizontally. So in other words, when I did that, the recognizer tried to determine whether or not the action that I was intending was horizontal or vertical, and then it chose only one of them based on that. The gesture detector would sort of fail if it went back and forth between the two listeners in this case, and it would cause all kinds of weird stuff to happen inside of your application. Along with dragging, we also have long presses. We have pans, gestures that pan the screen around. Say you have a map and you're moving it around with your finger. We also have scale motion. So if the user is pinching or pulling out. So there are quite a few listeners that you can put on a gesture detector. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good day.